and we find out the function is for his brother. He is now being promoted as an investigator in the DA's office, and that's going to be interesting. He's going to be more useful for the story. Um, as he's being celebrated, um, Tyreek comes in. He's looking for Tate. He needs to talk to Tate because he needs Tate's help to locate his sister who is in CPS, Child Protective Services. He wants to get the address to where she is. Uh, and Tate uh, sees uh, Tyreek. Uh, Tyreek was stopped by a cop uh, because he doesn't look like he belongs at the event. He was stopped by a white cop. Oh, yeah. And Tyreek lies and says that Tate is his uncle and he needs to talk to him. At the same time, Tate oversees this uh, this situation that um, is taking place. And he intervenes. He says um, he knows the young man. He talks to Tyreek. He tells Tyreek, um, if you do something for me, I'll do something for you. And what Tate wants is information on Sweeney. Because Sweeney has something that belongs to him. And what belongs to him is... Sweeney's congressional seat. Uh, Tyreek tells Tate that he knows a Weston and that his roommate is a Weston. Oh, that's that's going to be very useful for Tate. So that's the kind of information that he needs. And he says Tyreek says he'll get some in for dirt or some information on Sweeney, and that sounds like a deal uh, with Tate. So. Did you want to add something to that? I just want to add how Tate acts different around certain people, and I think it's really funny. Code switching. Code switching, yes. Yeah. He switches code. Yes, that's what he's doing. He has to fit in with the police and all those suits. And then with his own people. And then with his own people, because he dresses uh, uh, Tyreek totally different. Similar to Kanan used to do on the original Power. Oh, yeah. But a lot of people do that, you know, especially when you're not who you say you are. Because if you are who you say you are, you should be able to fit in everywhere if you're a good, decent person. But you cannot be a bad person and uh, um, and then try to get over, you know, people with suits. Even though cops are bad, you got to have that persona like you're a good guy. You're, you're everyone's man. You're the man that everyone can trust. So, yeah, you code switch because we you can't trust a con person so they're going to have to act differently to uh get on your good side and let you in so you can they can start disrupting your lives or whatever you know usually it's about power or money so yeah there's a lot of code switching going on um at the same time this is happening uh tate's brother is overlooking the conversation uh what tate and tyreek are having and the way he's looking it's like he knows something questionable is going on. I don't know if he knows who, um, who, uh, Tyree, uh, Tyreek is, but, um, maybe it was when Ghost Tate was running for, you no, know, when Tate was saying goodbye to Tyreek talking about nephew and his brother is like, I know that's not his nephew. He knows it was maybe that that's was why. No, it's not my son. Maybe that's why he was looking like that. I yeah, I just thought about that. Um, so it's gonna be interesting how the brother is gonna play in uh <clears throat> in the show. In the next scene we see Kane, Tyreek, and Mon Monet meet up in a dark place. Uh Monet and Kane drive up separately in their own cars and and Tyreek is walking, walking to the meet, uh, and he's late. I guess Monet doesn't take to that. It was Kane. I think Kane was the one I got mad, not Monet. Yeah. But then uh, they're all outside. Uh, they're outside of their tar cars talking, and Monet's acting all hard again and talking about um, the product. They got a new connect, and I guess with new connect, there's new rules. And... Um, Monet wants her money. She wants everything to go smoothly, of course. Um, and then Monet drives off. And then it was Kane and Tyreek. They talk about, I think it was the Reynolds case. Yeah, Monet tells 
Kane and Tariq to clear up whatever beef they've been having, but little does she know that they're already cool, and they were just talking about what connects them to be cool. Mm-hmm. She does not, doesn't know that um, Kane and Tyreek are entangled in a murder. They, pre- they lied to her in the last episode, I believe it was, mm-hmm. about it. And it's going to be ongoing until we figure out more. So um, then Kane, Kane and, or Kane leaves, and Tariq is just left standing there. And he says, these people can't even offer me a ride after all he does. <laughs> With all that money, Ty- can Tyreek drive? I mean, he's always walking. Okay, so after that, uh, I guess Kane takes himself over onto Mecca's house where Mecca's having a party. Was it a birthday party? I don't know what type of party it was, but it was a party. And he has his, um, uh, I guess, an associate there um, that I guess he's known Mecca for a while, and he introduces the associate to... Kane, uh, and he also brings out some girls for them to enjoy on the couch. And as they're enjoying the girls, they're talking, and I guess because they try to get Mecca to join in, and then the associate informs Kane that oh he is not into this because he's he's thinking about somebody else, somebody else, his long la uh, long, um, long lot lost love or somebody is on his mind and i guess mecca hears this and i'm in my head i'm thinking oh he's about to spill the beans on one day and yeah. he's, right, he's talking to kane and mecca over here and he's just like this maybe guy. he knows yeah because kane knows that's uh i mean a mecca knows that's kane's mother uh so but i don't know if the the, the associate no know, knew her name yeah and um <laughs> So what he does to stop that, his business getting out, he puts his hand on the associate's neck until he passes out. And Kane's sitting there on the couch while they were both enjoying these girls. He's just looking over at what Mecca is doing to the associate. I can't think of a nub or somebody, his name. And he, and he, uh, he gets, he gets uh, choked out and I think later, I mean, that messes with your head. I don't know how he can enjoy the girls after that. Uh, but uh, they go to another scene after that. Oh, actually, what happened was um, we know he's not dead because Mecca said... Um, he'll be online in a minute. Yeah, he'll <laughs> he will be back online in a minute, meaning I guess he's just uh, passed out. He's, he didn't kill him. Uh, why would people want to go to parties? If somebody treats somebody else like that, they could treat you like that. Stay away from him. But uh, Kane has, he, he doesn't have that kind of sense. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> the next scene we have Kevin Whitman, the police, in the police off, uh, station, the precinct. And he has, I don't know why they have, I think a phone goes off and it's in a paper, a plastic bag like it's evidence. I believe it's Zeke's phone. Or if it's not Zeke's phone, it's Carrie's phone. Yeah, but if Zeke is not under arrest, why do you have his belongings? That's true. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's weird. That would be his evidence or what his belongings were when he was at, at the time of the arrest. You're here at questioning. We're not taking your belongings. <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. <laughs> So while that phone's going off, Zeke is actually like in an interrogation type room. And um, Kevin goes in there because he wants to ask Zeke questions. And he makes it clear that he's not under arrest. Um, They just have questions for him. Uh, They want to know about, he wants to know about, Zeke's advisor and who Reynolds was to Zeke. He says he wasn't his advisor, um, that he was um, a professor there, but he wasn't his advisor. And they asked him who his advisor was. And he says, Carrie. And and then he quickly, quickly corrects himself and says, Carrie, um, Carrie dad, Milgram, Milgram. Yeah. Uh, cause When he said it, he knew he shouldn't be saying her, you know, addressing her by her first name. Um, And then something about a phone. Did the phone go off in there? Well, not right then, right? Later. 
I think it went off right after that. In the next scene, we see, um, yeah, we see Kane. He's waking up at Mecca's house. Mecca's it? house. You know, that's really weird because didn't they take, what time of day did they take uh, Zeke to the precinct? I know. Okay, this is really off because the the next scene was Kane waking up at Mecca's place this morning. And yeah. So let's I gotta figure out how long they have Zeke in custody because they've got you at night. And apparently that was the night of the party. Kane wakes up at the party and uh he talks to to Mecca. They have a brief conversation there. Um, and then their conversation talks about um, who's selling the product. And he's saying he got some St Steve Urkel looking guy selling the product. He's having this conversation with, with Mecca. Mm -hmm. um, Mecca wants to know who this person's, what this person's name is. At first, uh, Kane won't give it up. And so Mecca's like trying to intimidate him or saying that he won't be able to do business with him because you don't trust him because you won't give him the name. And it doesn't take long for uh, Kane to give up the name. He tells him that his person that he's dealing with is Tariq St. Patrick. And when he said the name, Mecca wasn't facing Kane. And he had this look like he, that name was familiar um, he wanted to know more about it, uh, more about the uh, the people that he's uh, going to be doing business with. Um, so the next scene we have Tyreek. He meets with CPS. He's trying to get Yaz back. Um, he's told that Yaz is staying with the the Ralstons, the Rostons, or somebody. I forgot the name. Um, I wonder if they're going to play a part, interesting part in the story. Um, but she's not going to be able to get, Zeke is not going to, I mean, not Zeke, Tyreek is not going to be able to get Yaz because he doesn't have um, a job, a place to stay. He's in the dorm and uh, that's going to be a problem. He won't be able to do it. Uh, she says that, and I guess she knows that speaking to, Tyreek at this point was somebody's a favor for somebody because this doesn't normally happen. So he's lucky enough to, she considers him lucky enough to know the information she gave, which is the name of the people and that they're a good home. Um, the next scene, we have Zeke talking to Kevin Whitman, the police at the precinct. Um, he's denying any relationship that he has with Carrie. Um, um, Whitman keeps pressing him, pressing him. You know, it's a personal thing. It's not even about the evidence. Um, but he keeps asking Zeke about this relationship and Zeke keeps denying it. So the next scene is the classroom where, um, Terry Reek, Laurel, uh, Lauren, and all the other classmates are having a discussion about the greater good. And it's being taught by Carrie and uh, Tate. Um, and Tate is acting like he's just running a campaign and, and he's speaking to his constituents about his mission, the way he talks. Um, so we cut to, uh, that, scene, that scene ends and then we are back to the police, uh, the precinct with Kevin and Zeke. Kevin keeps asking and questioning Zeke about his relationship with Carrie. He tells Zeke um, that he wasn't the only one that Carrie was with. And this is news to Zeke. He informs Zeke that Carrie was also with Professor Reynolds. News to Zeke. Uh, Kevin also has Zeke's phone and it keeps ringing. And it's Carrie trying to call Zeke. Um, 
So, Zeke. It's not just Kerry. It's also Drew and, like, teammates, his coach and all that, trying to get him to practice. Yeah, that's true. The phone is ringing for that as well. Um, but Zeke keeps saying that he, I guess they asked him, were you with her the night of the murder? And Zeke's saying, no, he wasn't with her the night of the murder. Um, cause if, you know, Kevin is, he, you know, he was told this by Carrie that he, she was with Zeke, but I don't, of course, Zeke doesn't know that. And he can't let it out that he was with his teacher because that's going to hurt her. And he doesn't want to hurt her because she'll lose her job if she's fraternizing with a student. So he's saying, no, he wasn't with her. He wasn't with her. Um, and then he still doesn't let him go. So the next scene, we have Tate and Tyreek. They meet up after class, and Tyreek asks for more help with Zaz. Um, he needs to know, to, um, Tate needs to know about Sweeney first. Give you, she said, give, uh, he said, give me dirt on Sweeney, and I'll give you the address. So Tyreek says he can get the dirt. Which we all know he can. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know how much. First of all, he doesn't have any dirt on him. You know, he doesn't even know if there is dirt. When he was at Braden's dad's little party thing, he was gonna. He was looking at that yearbook he had, mm -hmm. and I guess he saw something, but I guess not enough. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that yearbook. I think is gonna play a part. We might see that yearbook again. Oh, also after class, after Tyreek meets with Tate. Uh, he meets up with Lauren and of course um, they have a brief encounter and then his phone rings again and he's off he's actually has a call with um, Simon's boyfriend or husband that's the guy he's doing some business with last season it's about the course correct I believe I oh yeah he, the, he, the course correct yes and, but he needs, I think he needs, is that why he needs him? It's, um, he needs someone to sign some paperwork, I think, the president of the company. And he also needs a way to move product and he tied those two together. So he can do Me, Okay. That kid. My goodness. Um, so the next scene is Kanan or Kane. I keep calling him Kanan. Kane meets with Tyreek, but Tyreek also brings... Braden to the meet and uh, Bra uh, Kane is calling Braden all kinds of names you wonder why he brought him there calls him machine MGK. gun machine gun Kelly. machine gun Kelly yeah um, they talk about I guess what they're gonna do with the product and whatnot and as they drive away we they cut to Mecca Mecca was watching the meet, so he knows the parties involved. And after that, Braden is taken to Tyreek's new spot to, for the product. Yeah, Braden shows Tyreek a new spot. He had, I think, a family friend make. Yeah. He cut out a couple of bricks and he and a wall, like. He cut bricks out of a wall and used a 3D printer to make bricks. And he made the whole wall into safes. Yeah, okay. Accessible by QR code. Braden did a major upgrade to the spot. I guess he took him there previously, right? That wasn't his first time there, was it? I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, he got this whole um, mastermind way to collect and do, do the drug drop off but I don't know how that works they explain in the episode you go to the course correct app that they have yeah you get a code you go to the wall and you scan the wall a certain right spot, and then who's putting the stuff in the wall they are so there, there are times where they're at the wall but they're not like inside the building putting something in from the inside I'm not sure because they don't show all that they yeah because there's going to be 
you put the product in and then you put the code to somebody and they get the product out. Correct. And you have to do only one transaction at a time. No, there's multiple saves. Oh, there's multiple saves? Oh, I didn't get that part. Okay. That's interesting and um, really technical. I wonder who manages that. Um, Pretty sure they do. Who that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it's a major upgrade. Okay, so on the next scene, Kanan meets, or sorry, Mecca meets with Kane on the street. Uh, and Mecca tells Kane that the white kid is the way in. Um, because I guess maybe because he's white and then he's rich, maybe. Uh, he said, Mecca says, get Braden in the pocket. That means on your side, on your team. Mm -hmm. Get him to trust you. Okay. Uh, so and the next thing we have Diane and she's asking Monet if daddy knows if Kane is back. Of course, Monet, she's a little hostile again. And these kids can't ask a simple question. I, 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 the way she treats those kids. Okay. So, um, I think then we're going to see Diane later meet up with her dad. But the next scene we have Tate. He goes into Carrie's uh, office and he just asks a simple question if she knows the Wi-Fi password. And it was just his way to break the ice to get a little closer to him. And she's like, it, you know, it's on your wall. Um, as they're talking, the cop Whitman comes in. So uh, he disrupts their conversation and Tate leaves. He walks out. He walks out and he goes into the next room to, you know, ear hustle to what the conversation is uh, that Whitman has with Carrie. And Whitman is telling Carrie behind closed doors that Zeke was at the precinct um, and that he denied being with her on the night that Reynolds was killed. So her alibi is up in smoke. And I can I guess she can't even believe that he's been in, taken into custody because um, he's trying to paint the, mo uh, the narrative that Zeke would have a motive to kill Reynolds because of a love affair. But he knows that Zeke didn't even know about Reynolds, he's just playing Carrie. It's all personal. It's extremely yeah, obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, now Tate, he got an earful. He hears all of this. So this information is uh, now known to Tate. So I wonder what he's going to do with it. Diane, we have in the next scene. She goes to the prison to meet her daddy or meet up with her daddy, Lorenzo. They speak Spanish to each other there. She's all greeting him. Hello, Poppy. And they have um, a brief conversation. Now, what was about? What was the conversation about they had in Spanish? It's hard to remember. I believe they were talking about moving weight. She was saying, or he was saying how his family are distributors and he wants to like keep it like under the radar and keep it safe. And then... Did she tell her dad about Kane being back in the family? He has to know because it was his idea to bring Kane back. Because when Monet was there last episode, okay. he, Monet was explaining to him about Kane had an idea about bringing in a new connect. And but, he said, you have to do what's best for the family or something. I don't know. But Diane doesn't know that. Diane doesn't know that her dad knows this. So she's under the impression that her dad doesn't know. Mm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> So I wondered if she told him in Spanish that, you know, Kane or Kane's I don't understand the whole conversation, but I picked up on bits and pieces. Okay. Um, so um, we see that Monet is having a lunch date with Mecca. So she must have called. Uh, him she had she was given his business card and Mecca 
apparently bought out the whole restaurant so they could eat uh, privately and alone. In their conversation, we learned some things that it's been 24 years since they've seen each other. So I wonder how old is Kane? Is he 24? Because last episode, we know she celebrated her 22nd wedding anniversary with Lorenzo. So that's interesting to figure out how old is Kane. If he's 24, was Lorenzo in her life that time? Did she leave Mecca and went right in to Lorenzo? Because there's a two-year gap because she didn't just marry that guy. She must have been dating him a while. So you're married for two years, but how long were you dating before that? Um, we also learn that Monet believes that Mecca is in the import-export business. And apparently, she, from the looks of it, through her eyes, he's done well if you can buy out a restaurant Uh and have a, a private lunch. And he also calls her something by her real name, something Stewart. Nene Stewart. Nene Stewart. And also, did we learn that the house she's living in is was her mother's house? Her parents' house? Yeah. I think Mecca brings it up. So she's still, or she brings it up. She brings it up about the trash cans. Um so um, she's still in the same house that she's off. What has this drug business done for you? Still in the same house that your parents lived in? Um, she got a Range Rover and a G-Wagon. Where, no, <laughs> where are you parking this in the old neighborhood? Where are these cars parked? <laughs> um, okay, so the next, the next scene, we have the girl, I guess her real... Her stage name is Light Skin Keisha. For her, I don't know what her name is on the show. Um, she needs more camera time. She's very entertaining. Is she? Um, she and Lauren are in a dorm room where Zeke's jump off or whoever she was, the girl that was in the room with Zeke when the police picked him up, she shows them uh, a videotape that she took of the cops taking or Kevin Whitman taking Zeke um, from his dorm room. And uh, Lauren doesn't think this is a good idea. Um, and light skinned Keisha girl, whatever her name is, she says that, you know, he's going to be all right. He's no Aaron Rodgers, meaning like he didn't do anything. Yeah. He's innocent. Um, and she's also, she wants her to relax. She, Pulls out a, I guess a joint. She calls smoking a Lizzo's. A Liz, some they're smoking some Lizzo's. I don't know what that <laughs> means, but it must be some salt. And you know, Lauren isn't about that life at all. She's all, is that we? Um, they sh she leaves the room. I guess she doesn't want to have anything to do with that. And those drugs from Braden and 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 Tyreek. There was like a little package. She opens the drawer and she puts that in. I guess that's Lauren's room. Um, it was the course correct. The course correct oh, drugs, yeah. and she put them. Um, she she smoked the joint, uh, Liz or the light skin Keisha, and she left the package of drugs in Lauren's nightstand. So I guess that's gonna be um, that's gonna be in a scene later. I guess. So. Diane meets with Davis. I guess earlier, did, she, did Tyreek said, I can help you? With a referral. With a referral? Okay. So the referral that she needs to help her dad out of jail, out of prison, is a lawyer. And the lawyer Tyreek recommended, of course, is Davis. While Diane and Tyreek are talking, um, of course, Tyreek is interrupted by his phone. Um, the phone goes off. He's getting a call. And it is Tate on the line. And so as he answers the call from Tate, Diane leaves. Tate's calling because he has the information that Zach needs, some additional information that um, Tyreek needs um, about his sister's whereabouts or some information on his sister. 
that will help them out. As Diane's leaving the rooftop that Lauren showed Therese, Lauren starts walking up the stairs and she bumps into Diane and they have a little, hey, and they get a little attitude look on their face. They're all... And they pass each other and then they give each other a weird side. look. Yeah. They side eye each other like, because I'm sure Diane's thinking like, what's she doing here? And then uh, Lauren is thinking, this is my spot that I brought Tyreek to and he's bringing another chick up here? That's why she's side eyeing her. So... Um, Tyreek gets off the phone call with Tate as uh, Lauren walks up to him and he, she's like "Why? this is my spot why are you bringing people up here what's going on type of thing then she gets up there to the rooftop and starts talking to Tariq and then she tells him blah 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 whoop de whoop why'd you bring Diana up here and then he's like, I have a lot going on. It's not what you think. And she's just like, oh, man, you know, he's just lying. And then she storms off and then Tariq gets a text from Tate. CPS 28th floor. That's where uh, Yaz is. That's where Yaz is. So in the next scene. Okay. In the next scene. Mecca takes Monet on a romantic helicopter ride. Oh, overlooking the city and um, he's talking about what could have been or what they could be and she's saying she's never done this before I don't know what she means by that like stepping out on her husband because that's not true she was with Ramirez so um, they even have a romantic kiss in the elevator um, and the helicopter in the hel- I'm sorry the helicopter not the elevator moves her hair and then it gets all dramatic <laughs> Gets all dramatic. Oh, lucky Mary J gets to kiss Daniel Sanjaya. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, um, while she's up in the helicopter, uh, she's missing a phone call from Zeke, who's at the police precinct. Um, he's trying to get in touch with his aunt, but she's out on a date. Um, so the next scene after that, we have Tyreek. He takes Lauren to the CPS office where Yaz is being held, or not held. Well, I guess held, but <laughs> where Yaz <laughs> oh, she's is, a <laughs> where she's taken. She's been taken in to be placed in a foster home because her grandma was uh, drunk and driving. So he takes Lauren there to show um, to see that. Um, he is busy. He has a lot on his plate. He has a sibling that is in the system that he's trying to get out. Um, and Yaz runs up and she hugs, uh, Tyreek, her brother. She's so happy. Um, Lauren, I think it touches Lauren's heart. She likes this. It softens her heart for, um, for Tyreek. You know, she's just a regular girl and, and, this is just a sweet moment that she gets to witness on a guy she likes. So maybe he's worth liking that he has a sweetheart. But we see Yaz, and um, looks like she's wearing a a Burberry sweater. Yeah. You know that's you know how many kids in CPS have Burberry? You know usually you have an act together. You have someone who can take you in. Um, but that's you know you never know when when something's gonna happen in your life. That's true. Um. So they're getting like a supervised visit with Yaz. The CPS lady is in the room and uh, Lauren helps Tyreek distract her. Lauren gets up and she's asking the supervisor lady where the bathroom is. And she has the supervisor lady actually get up and show her where the bathroom is. Meanwhile, Tyreek has a stuffed animal that he's given to Yaz. And in that stuffed animal is a phone. He's showing Yaz the phone. And um, basically, uh, he's going to instruct her when and where to use that phone. Uh, So the next scene after that, Lauren is with Zeke still. Um, They have a love scene Uh, and 
this is the first time I think they've actually had this type of love scene um, from what Zach said. I'm mean, not Zachy Kim Hong Zach. Tyreek says, <laughs> that's, another, that's something else. <laughs> um, and um, finally, I guess, did the phone ring and interrupt them again? Or did that not happen? I think what happened was, like, Tree got a notification. And the notification was the video that Lauren's friend Oh, posted. yes. Okay, so wait, that might be coming up. So meanwhile, while they're having their love scene... The next scene after that is Monet. Uh, she lands. She's out of the helicopter. She's on solid ground. And that's when she gets the message from Zeke um, that he's, you know, at the police precinct. So she has to leave Mecca. She has to go. She has to end her date um, abruptly to see about her nephew, Zeke. Next scene. Uh, this is the next scene where Tyreek gets his phone. Um, and it shows that he sees the video that Sierra took, the girl that was with Zeke. Zeke at the time of his, not arrest, but the time he was picked up from the cop, Kevin. Um, and he sees this video and he is, um, Furious. yeah, because, and the thing is, he sees a video and he instantly thinks Zeke's my tie to going to school here. This could affect my um my enrollment and then lauren's like oh i already knew and she's like what yeah she, i guess he told her who took the video and whatnot and he and she doesn't she didn't know the big picture she didn't know that he's tied to zeke that way if if zeke um is out of school gets kicked out of school he gets kicked out of school he's only at school as long as he can keep uh zeke um uh, Passing. Passing. And then now it makes you think, didn't Monet want him to enter the draft enter the draft? You wouldn't be in school. So what would happen to to uh Tyreek's enrollment there? His participation in school. Will you get kicked out? Because Zeke is no longer here. That's interesting. I wonder if yeah, that will that come have up. To do with yeah. So um so now uh Lauren has learned something new about Tyreek. Um so Tyreek calls Davis for help with Zeke being in police, not custody or it, it looks maybe to uh, Tyreek. It looks worse than it is because in the video, you see the cop, the, the cop that he even spoke to about the, the case. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't know if he was arrested or not. Nobody knows like, outside of Zeke that he's arrested or not. He's at the police station. So I guess they assume he's arrested. Mm -hmm. So I guess they assume he needs a lawyer. So that's why Tyreek calls Davis for help. So next thing we have Tyreek, he's uh, not Tyreek, Zeke. Zeke is in the uh, police station, still talking to um, detective Kevin Whitman. And he tells him that he has a PDA card. I guess it's like a get out Public of. Defense. Oh, is that what no, that is? Because no, Ramirez signed up like defender, but it's like a get out of car. Sometimes, get out of jail yeah. yeah. Um, so um, he hands that over to Kevin, and Kevin's like, "Where'd you get this card?" You know, um, he goes, oh, "I don't know." He couldn't. Rem he lied. He says, "I." He, what he says is that I don't know a fan. I think it was a fan at the game. He's a fan of mine, and he was at the game, and, and he gave oh, me the oh. card. Um, so in the next scene, we have Monet. Monet is at the police station. She busts in. She's talking to Whitman, cussing him out. Who are you? Who do you, you don't know who I am. She and turns to the interrogator yeah, <laughs> real quick. She turns gangster in the New York police station to these policemen. She is running things. She goes, gets her nephew and says, you know, she's getting him out of there. She's trying to walk him out of there. As she gets him out of the police station, that integrity interrogation room or that where they question him she walks into davis um and she's like who are you <laughs> you got mary j blige and method man uh in this scene together i think it's the first time they have been in the scene since the uh show started so um <laughs> makes me think of their song all i need to get by and 
she all she needs to get by is Davis. Davis gives her some more information about taking Zeke out the back door. So, cause there's all these camera crews and everything, and that's going to hurt him. So, um, she listens to, to Davis and they go out a different door. Uh, meanwhile, Davis, he represents himself as Zeke's lawyer and he is talking to the press the press, um, about his, his client, uh, Zeke, Zeke Cross. Zeke Cross. Mm. So, and I just have to point out if anyone follows basketball and you know, Giannis onto the Kumpa on the Bucks, the finals MVP, let me know if you agree with me in the comments. Do, do they not look like twins? Every time I see Zeke, I just think Giannis is in the show, and it is hilarious. <laughs> is he the Greek freak? The Greek freak. Oh, okay. Yeah, finals right. MVP. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. i got to see a picture of him. Um, so uh, Zeke has, or uh, actually, Monet has Zeke in the car, and she pulls over, and she's talking to him, and she's arguing about Kelly, or Carrie. She's that one, your girlfriend, she was the one who's sleeping with the uh, professor. She's making this connection. And um, he says, I did what you taught me to do. I gave him that PDA card to the cops. Um, and And Monet, then it clicks in Monet's head that Ram she knows that Ramirez is dead already, and they're going to connect it somehow. Connect. Ramirez's death to Zeke, which would they had maybe they had a possible theory before that uh, that some this had something to do with the was Ramirez on the case about um, the kid that got killed in the by the swimming pool was he on that case No, he wasn't. Oh well, they're gonna make. I mean, it's so weird that Zeke had this card about Ramirez, a missing cop. And he's in connection with the killing of the professor at the school, which was a, a further, there was a, a another murder uh, last season. And it, I don't know, things are, they're going to start thinking things or all these related things and somehow you're connected to all of them. Um, so Zeke gets mad because he wasn't clued in that Ramirez was dead and they should have taken that card away from him. Um, cause they don't tell him nothing. They just tell him what he needs to know as he needs to know it. And, but that's how, you know, balls get dropped because, um, now he has this, um, weird connection to a missing cop. Um, so and Zeke, he would have waited 30 seconds. That wouldn't have even been in play. Because Monet was already in the building when that happened. Maybe, maybe. Um, I don't know if she would have even thought about that card. Maybe she would have, maybe. But now Zeke is angry with Monet. Because they're just running his life, doing what they want to do to him as they need to do it to serve themselves. They're not looking out for his um, interest. interest. Best interest. Uh, yeah, his best interest. Uh, so the next scene we have... Braden and Kane, uh, they're talking about he has a bag of money for, um, Kane, for... or actually Kane has some money for him, but it's not enough money. Yeah. So because they need to get the money for Braden to be the president. Right. I don't even think Braden knows what the money's for, but he knows that uh, Tyreek needs thirty thirty thousand dollars. And apparently that's not enough money. I don't know how the street people got more money than the, the people who are giving you the drugs. They're saying they make more money off the street because Kane is saying that he'll turn this money around, uh, give him, make him more money by morning. Um, they probably Kane probably rocks it up. So yes, yeah, so instead of, instead of Kane giving the bag of money to, Braden, he keeps the money? Does he keep the money? He keeps the money overnight. He keeps the money overnight. He's supposed to see him at 10 o'clock to pick up the bag, and it's supposed to have more money in it. Um, the next scene we have Mo, uh, Monet dealing with Kane to help out Zeke. What was that about? 
That's a great question because I remember they were at the dinner table. I don't remember what Monet. Oh, she she got mad at Kane because he always messes up something. What did he mess up? Because he killed Ramirez, and that oh was the big that's causing them yeah. a problem in the if family. If it wasn't for that, Zeke would probably just be out of out of um, harm's way and everything. Okay. Um, but little does she know that Kent also killed what's his face or helped kill what's his face, Jabari. Mm. And those are going to be linked together now because Zeke had the card on him. And they had the murder weapon at the scene of what's it called? Well, the next scene is Kane. He's going to Tariq's dorm. He knocks on the door, door and Tariq opens it and Kane punches him in the face. Woke up to a knuckle sandwich. He woke up to a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> now he is. He is. Um, I guess he's mad at Tyreek because of. Why is he mad at Tyreek? What did he do? He's mad at Tyreek because Tyreek said it was all going to fall on Carrie. Oh, yes. That's right. You're right. And then he says, and then Tariq defends himself, or Kane says, it's supposed to go down on Carrie or whatever, but now it's going on Zeke. This is all your fault. And Tariq says, it's not my fault. He didn't know that they were entangled or whatever. Right. He didn't and know then, that uh, Zeke was having an affair with Carrie. Correct. And then, uh, what's his face? Kane said, you said it was going to go down on what's your face. So if it doesn't, this is all on you. Mm. And you're taking the fall for all three of those uh, bodies. Right, right, right. Okay, so um, now we have Diane. She's meeting with Davis and Sachs at the lawyer's office to get help for her father to get out of prison. Um, Sachs doesn't want to take the case. And he's like saying things about, you know, like making it act like he's not going to take the case. Um, after Diane leaves, Davis tells Sachs, like, what are you doing? That's good for business. Repeat customers. They got the money to pay them. You're looking at it the wrong way. You're looking at it as a prosecutor or something. You're not, you're not seeing the money come in. You know, this is when you're on the corporate side of things, when you're, um, defense attorney you get a lot more money uh you know you, if you're working for the prosecutor usually that is with the state or whatever and usually typically they say that they don't make much money the other and the prosecutor or the defense mm -hmm. attorneys they're going to get those dr kingpin drug people they got the money to pay the lawyers that hourly rate so you don't turn them down Davis or uh, Sachs has to look at things differently in this uh, in this business. So the next scene, um, we have Braden waiting for his money from Kane. Um, he tries to lure. Why does he try to get uh, Braden? Why does Kane try to get Braden to go out with those girls? Because Mecca wants. Kane to oh, be closer with them. That's why he's doing that. Okay, so that's his attempt to. Um... That's his attempt to bring Braden in closer to have more leverage over him, I guess. Oh yeah, to just make him feel like he's, um, you know, he's cool with them. Yeah. To get in good with him, um, I guess for some intel later down the line. Okay, so. Um, Next thing we have Sachs. Oh, he's with his um, his uh, friend. The she's a, a what is she? A prosecutor at the for a different firm. Well, but she's, she's one of the ops. I think she is. She works for the lawyer. You know this the state. She's a def, she's oh, a prosecutor. A she's a prosecutor. Jennifer uh, Sullivan, um, and he's talking about. Um, they're talking, they're pillow talking about cases and uh, they're talking, I guess they're talking about a case, Walt Griffin Griffith. It was a case that he had or that, that was in connection to who? 
to Lorenzo. To yeah. Lorenzo. Oh, to and Lorenzo, he, uh, which is Diane's dad, the girl that he met at the office. Correct. Okay. Um, so he makes a phone call. Who's he calling? He's asking the question. He texts Davis. We can get Lorenzo out of prison. Oh, and so he wants to know when does he get out of prison? No. He tells Davis we can get him out of prison. He tells Davis? He texts Davis. I thought he texted Davis, when can Lorenzo get out of prison? I don't remember seeing that part. Okay. I think that's what the text said. Okay, so um, we have our final scene. Okay, and now we have Tyreek with Brayden going to Simon's husband's office to sign papers uh, for their corporation. They're going to have Braden sign as the president of this corporation. And that ends the scene. So what what's going to happen later is there's this paper trail about this corporation and Braden's name is on it instead of Tyreek in case it's ever audited. But I, I, there's still a paper connection. This is your, this is your dorm mate. You have a connection to this guy. So that's going to be interesting. They end it with that. So it's going to be something that's going to come of that. So that was the last scene in that, of, of this episode of power book two, uh, episode three, the greater good. So we'll come back next week for episode four. We're really excited for the rest of the season to play out. More reviews here on the channel. Housewives of Salt Lake City. Married at First Sight. And if you want to see some of my videos over at Everyday Trippin', there will be a link on the screen. And we'll see you guys next week for the power review. We got living to do. Catch you later.